Hey guys, so today we are finally going to review Theory, The Art of Evil. Now, um, not the previous video, but the video before that, I reviewed the album Difecto Nemesis. And in that review, I said that the lead singer, um, Nicholas Sohn, um, was in the band Theory. So the singer of Defecto is um, singing in this album um, by Theory. He's not playing the uh, guitar, he doesn't play uh, guitar at all, so no rhythm, no solos, he's just singing. Um, I still think uh, this album probably may have been mixed in his studio, he may have um, produced the album also because uh, Nicholas is a producer and he does have his own studio and everything. He's the manager for Defecto as well, I'm not sure if he's the manager for Theory. But um, yeah, if you like the voice in Defecto, then you should really jump into Theory because um, personally I think his voice is actually better in this album than it is in uh, Defecto. So um, getting into uh, this album, this album came out in 2017 I believe, um, it came out after um, Defecto's album Nemesis, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the album um, first track, it, it's an opener called Awakening. Uh, there's not much to it, uh, the musicians aren't playing here. Um, it only lasts uh, 51 seconds, I believe. There's nothing too special about it, it's quite brooding and everything. And then it gets into the title track, The Art of Evil, and um, you notice that the sound of the instrument, so the guitar, is um, quite a fat sound, just like in Defecto, and this is again due to the reason that they are playing seven strings. The seventh string being um, pretty much a bass string, that is what the seventh string is, it is the low bass string, which gives it that really thick um, sound. It can be a bit muddy, like in Defecto, um, it can be nice, it can be a bit too muddy at times, and um, it's the same with this, it can be nice and at times a bit too muddy depending on where about in the net they're playing. Um, but um, to start off with it's um, the very thick sound, it's uh, quite uh, heavy and aggressive, it's um, got a slow pace to it so the guitars aren't doing anything intricate, it's uh, just a quite thick sound, chugging along um, at a decent pace, nothing much. When the singer comes in, that's uh, when um, it's quite special. Um, Nicholas here, his voice is a lot more open. In Defecto, his voice is a lot more direct, a lot harsher. It is varied, but his voice is definitely pushed, um, using a lot of energy and uh, projection to get his notes out, or just quite sharply delivered and with a bit of an attack to it. Here it's very open, the sound. He's not um, pushing and using a lot of um, oomph to really um, project the voice. It's um, very laid back, natural, nice, easy flow um, to get um, his uh, voice out. Um, it probably has an effect on it. it um, his voice sounds um, to have a bit of an echo, so it sounds like he's singing in a big open room, um, in, um, let's say like in an arena, um, like a cathedral, if he was to, um, sing and the acoustics would, um, kind of bounce the sound around and it would sound open. That is kind of, um, what is going on here. Um, his voice is very open and, um, has a sound of quite a decent projection. Um, it sounds big, it's a very big sound, it's very open, it's a very nice um, sound and it is new from him because as I said in Defecto, he is a lot more aggressive in his uh, delivery, not in a bad way, like when I say aggressive I don't mean he's growling and grunting, it's just um, a lot more forced and it's just a different singing style basically. Um, but um, the verse it, his voice is open, the riffs are going and they're chugging the quite beefy tone. The chorus, it opens the sound up um, a tad bit. The um, problem with this uh, track, um, personally, is after the second chorus, um, there's a breakdown leading up to the um, solo. 
and this is all kind of screamed. It just doesn't sound great. It's not musical because the verse and the chorus has been delivering very musically and very pleasing sounds. And then you just get this kind of scream and it, it, it it's not natural. Um, in de facto, um, there is more screaming than in theory. Um, but there's one track where it's just slight tad in there which uh, just gives it um, a new structure and it's only there for a while. We are the enemy, it's overwhelmed and overstayed. But um, in the other tracks uh, when he kind of does it, it's so subtle and it just adds such a nice variety and just some way more versatility but um, here it's just it's so musical and it just goes to just random screaming which it's not natural, it, it doesn't flow very well and because it keeps kind of going on and on and on and on this kind of big chunk scream after the second chorus it's way too much and even for the tad bit as I said it's just not natural um, I think for this uh, song. Um, the solo um, on the website, um, his uh, biography, it's a bit kind of blowing smoke up his rear end um, for the uh, reason that they say the guy's a god. He's also a god on the guitar, by the way. Now, the solo is uh, quite musical here. It's um, not overly fast. It has its um, occasions where it uh, speeds up a tad, but uh, overall it's um, quite laid back, um, taking its time, um, making sure each note um, has its uh, you know time. So it's hold, it's um, how you process and uh, recognize it and then he moves on to something else. Then there's a bit of flash so you can be like, okay, there's something uh, quite technical um, for me. Um, that's the way the solo um, overall kind of goes. Um, the fast parts, they're not anything to really, uh, you know, uh, go and, you know, tell people about. It's like, wow, you should um, see it when he really gets technical. It's just basically um, like a midway type of technicality, so not on the kind of really high end, and it's not on the low end, it's just kind of around here, it's just like, it was pretty good. And as for the uh, musical side of uh, the melody of his solo, which is the majority of this, it sounds nice. It's not one of these melodics where it's just like, I'm bored to tears, and it's not one of the ones which is like, God, this is unbelievably beautiful. This is amazing. Like Defecto's album, Endlessly Falling, that melodic solo just screams beauty and just heart, talent, Seize the Day and uh, the solo So Far Away, beauty, talent. The solo Ablaze by Defecto again, um, just the gradual ease into it and just Every note is erupting with energy and feel. It's so powerful. This is not like that. It's just, this sounds nice. But again, it's nothing spectacular. It's high end compared to all the guitarists. But it's not one of the best. So going into the Sea of Damnation, um... The um, verse here, um, the vocals again um, open, uh, the vocals throughout is always uh, open in this album, but the instrumentation, it's uh, more of them kind of chugs and then they take a step back and um, give it a bit of a pause while uh, the singer keeps going, so it's doing its kind of chugging and then a bit of a pause and then back to the chugs uh, while the vocals are going, but the chorus here, um, it is so open it, and um, such a big sounding uh, chorus. It's like probably the best uh, chorus on the album. It is just so big, so epic in sound and scape. It's uh, just fantastic. It, uh, it's just such an open sound and uh, so grand. And the singer just holds and he's projecting it and it sounds so big and then about halfway through it goes to kind of the more kind of groovy kind of sound but it's still very open so it's like 
the very big open grand sound of the first part of the chorus and then the second part it's big and but it's kind of more grooving and everything with more of a rhythm to it and um it's a fantastic uh, chorus vocally unbelievably delivered and then the groove at the second part amazing like and sea of damnation is basically amazing purely because that chorus is so huge in their sound and scope but the solo damn god it is terrible the solo lasts maybe five seconds he just comes in with a that was basically it that i basically just did it that is it so it's just mindless speed obviously that doesn't sound nice just dun -dun 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 -dun. That is it, that's how it sounds. There's nothing musical about it, and there's nothing interesting about it. Yeah, it was quick, but that was it. He's just going, look at me, but look, and that was it. It, it. It's not thoughtful, it's not thought through of, you know, doing some kind of hold or something to kind of uh, give variety to it, to make it sound pleasing, instead of just attacking with just, and that was it. And because it's come and gone so quickly, it's just like, here's the sort, oh, there, oh. Right then. It annoys me so much. And I like solos. I really like solos. But because this is so insulting of a solo. It's so quick. Actually it's not even that quick. There is so much quicker. It's just a mid-range type of speed that's not doing anything. And being versatile. It's just blah, blah, in the same place. Not that quick three seconds maybe and it's over it's not musical it's not interesting it's not thought provoking it's not well done it's not incredibly quick and even if it was very quick like, like I can give him wow that's really fast but still I'm not just saying I want very quick and that would be good enough he needs versatility to it unless it's just nothing really nothing special or unique or grand at all and because whenever I hear it, that's the case. It's just it's insulting of a solo because the art of evil, the solo in that, was pretty gr pretty great. It was really good. And then now here, it's just three seconds, nothing thoughtful. Just but it must have took him. He must have just sat down, did it, and then pissed off, and that was it. It, it was so poor. And as I say, I love solos but because it is so insulting of a solo, and such a poor excuse of a solo, I keep questioning myself if it would be better if there was actually no solo. Because I love a solo, and that every song I feel needs a solo, personally, to me. But because this angers me so, and just hearing it is so insulting and poor, I think I won't be as angry if they just didn't even bother. Because it just winds me up so much. If they had no solo, it would still wind me up. But I don't think it would be this mind-numbing annoying. So, See Your Damnation, the greatest chorus in the album. It's so big and so open and sounds just spectacular. And the solo is so goddamn awful. It's a weird one. Now, Demon's Domain... Um, it's probably around five minutes, but it sounds so big in scope because it's uh, quite a um, quite um, a versatile song, and it goes through quite a progression. Now, the second it starts, um, it is definitely old school, like Maiden and um, Nazi style, like back in the eighties and things. It is so goddamn old school in sound. It's not modern old school. It's old school. It's very old school sounding. Obviously in the modern way, but not modern like Event Sevenfold with some hints of old school. It's just, it's old school, just done in, you know, the 21st century. And then, um, obviously Nicola's voice, it kind of bobs along. Uh, old school quite um, has a fair bit of groove to it, more than, uh, you know, modern um, sounds. That is um, usually the case. So it's got quite a groove to it. It's very old school sounding. Nicholas's um, voice is quite kind of bobbing along uh, to the rhythm of it quite nicely. And then, again, about halfway through the uh, verse, um, it just 
blows into modern and um, the old school is just gone. They just leave it and it just goes to quick modern. And then the pre-chorus, he's doing pinched harmonics and everything and all these kind of aggressive modern sounds. Then it goes to the chorus and it's back to old school. Where he's um, going, um, she's the queen of the night, hiding in the shadow, spitting fire. And it's got that back to that beat and very old school. And then when the chorus is done, it goes to blistering um, fast and everything and very modern. And then it's back to the pinched harmonics and then back to the old school sound. So it's all over the place with old school and modern um, not kind of fused together. They're both separate but when it does the change it fits really well it's um quite unique and it makes um the song seem quite long in length and quite you know grand in scope and um because of all the changes and then you get a solo again it's um quite slow i believe um if i remember correctly but it's um again nothing really special it's not a grand melodic it's uh, nothing to write home about it's uh, just a um, nice melodic it's about it strangers descent starts um quite arabic kind of uh, like uh, aladdin it's uh, got that kind of um indian sound with the chimes and things and uh things like that i, I don't know these instruments because it's not what you listen to i listen to metal but um that's basically the tone. You, you, I'm sure you get what I'm getting at. It's uh, it's quite Indian, um, sounding Arabic type of uh, music. And um, when it actually kicks in, the singer kicks in um, immediately as well. So it just kind of comes in, and um, it's uh, quite brooding this one. So um, Nicholas is not got the openness uh, to him. It's still open compared to uh, the likes of the Facto, but um. It's uh, definitely more kind of um, a brooding, uh, quite dark um, sound to it. And then when it gets to the chorus, it's still brooding, but it's um, a lot more open in scope. Um, it sounds good, and it still has the great rhythm. It's uh, very musical. It, this is the thing about theory. Um, even when they kind of get a bit kind of aggressive in sound and a bit rough, um, they always make sure that it is very kind of musical and pleasing and open. Um, as for the solo, um, lead solo, it's uh, quite technical, um, instead of uh, melodic, uh, again, nothing <laughs> too special. Um, but um, there's a keyboardist in this, um, which is from Dream Theatre, so ex-Dream Theatre uh, keyboardist. And um, his keyboard solo is um, definitely better than the actual solo. It um, is very... Um, pleasing it does its speed it um knows um what it's doing with the speed so as i say um taking the breaks and then opening it up and then making sure it has variety so it's uh, quite nice and pleasing and easy to uh, remember instead of it just being so quick and all over the place that you can't really process um the next track frozen um is um again open sound um the chorus um sounds um big and great uh the next track liquid order um this is kind of an arch enemy thing um from what um i personally see it's um an interlude um which arch enemy does in between the album um to kind of uh, slow you down relax and then to bring you back into the full swing of things and it kind of sounds like uh, the arch enemy interludes here it's basically the best solo by the guitarist it's um very um sweet, uh, very nice, um and pleasing, and um it has its holes. It knows its holes. It does it very well. It's the most pleasing um solo, um by far. It is very good. Um, it lasts a minute, something I believe. Um, so it it's not long. As I say, it's just like uh, what Arch Enemy kind of do. The next track, uh, The Escape, is um, one of the more heavy ones. Um, the chorus is still kind of grand in sound and everything, but um, it's definitely one of the more kind of brooding um, sounds and um, kind of um, 
you know, not as open. Um, he does get open um, in the pre-chorus. Um, the pre-chorus um, really sounds uh, quite big and epic. Um, even more kind of big and epic than the actual chorus, which um, is open, but it's a bit kind of slow. As for the pre-chorus, it's uh, got a lot of power, basically, to it. In Silence We Ride, um, it's, um, again, um, a bit more kind of brooding in the verse and everything, and um, voice still open and everything, as I say, it, it always is, but um, the chorus um, definitely takes you on a ride, as the title says in Silence We Ride. Um, the voice um, flows naturally, the instruments are working in tangent with his voice so well and everything. It's a great sounding chorus. Catch-22 is pretty much a Symphony X song, um, to the T, basically. And um, he's got that Russell Allen kind of broody type of uh, thing going on. Um, the instruments are very dark and muddy and um, there's a lot of kind of pinched harmonic type of things going on. Um, it sounds better than Symphony X because I think Russell Allen I'm going to lose all my subscribers, but I don't think he's that good a singer. He can be. I'm not saying he is bad. It's just he doesn't try to actually use his voice to what it should be. He keeps making himself sound not that good. All that brooding and uh, kind of growlish things he does, he sounds terrible. He only sounds good when it's that big open sound. As for Nicholas, this is more kind of brooding and low tone, but it sounds musical. Russell, Russell Allen cannot do it. He sounds bad. This is so basically what I'm saying is, if you like Symphony X, that tone, Catch Twenty Two is that but better. Everyone's going to disagree with me, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate, but that's the case. In my opinion, obviously. And in my opinion, I don't think uh, Russell Allen, if that is actually his name, is uh, that good a singer. He just has to do his open there tone. That is where he shines. The other tone where he does more of the heavy type of stuff. And he sounds pr pretty crap. Our Journey is the melodic of the album. Um, it always stays melodic. Um, it's got the open sound to it. There's no solo. So because it's always melodic and quite slow, with uh, not much else to it, and no solo, it's a bit boring. But the fact does the same for some reason when they go to the actual melodic, they won't do a solo. Like a real melodic solo to go for a melodic song would kind of show something new probably, but they don't do it and it's quite frustrating. I don't know what their thought process is. It's going to be a solo like none of the others that come with a heavy kind of song or a groovy type of song. Like Endlessly Falling in a Blaze is melodic to a degree, but a pure melodic, I would like to see what they can do with that. Like maybe an acoustic solo or something. Like, And they, they know this. Uh, th this guitarist is not half bad. The two guitarists in Defecto are blooming impressive. They should know what to do. So I just don't get it. Skies are falling, um, back to uh, the typical thing, open sounds and open choruses, but uh, this chorus um, seems to run at maybe a bit too slow of a pace. Um, it should be a tad quicker, um, I think. But um, overall, um, the singing is very open, it's very grand, it's impressive as all hell, and the choruses are big and open and very musical and memorable. It's a very open sound and it's um, very easy to get into. So comparing to Defecto, um, Defecto there's a hell of a lot more going on. There's a lot more um, variety to uh, what's musically going on. The singer um, sounds completely different. It's um, He's versatile, he, um, but um, he doesn't do um, the kind of style of uh, theory, the more kind of open sound. The solos are goddamn amazing. But because there's so much going on, it takes a while and a few listens to really kind of uh, process everything and get everything kind of stuck in your head. It took me a lot of listens to um, figure out that uh, Before the Veil, um, that chorus is actually acoustic. 
which I should have known in the beginning because it's so blooming obvious, which makes me feel like I'm sick and I shouldn't actually be doing reviews because I didn't even get that. But um, that was the case. As for theories, because things are kind of slower and a lot more open, it's a lot easier to get into. It's a lot more easy to digest. It's an easy listen. As for Defecto, you kind of need a bit of brain power to kind of go along with that because there's a fair bit going on. Kind of uh, the thing I had with Event Down Falls, the stage, when I first heard that for about four times, I hated the thing. On my fifth, I was kind of like, uh, I'm kind of seeing something. And then a fair few more listens after that, I started thinking, God, there is so much here. There is so much. But because there was so much, it's hard for your brain to keep up. You forget everything. Nothing's really rememberable because it keeps changing and everything. So it's hard to remember. And because there's so much underneath and so much processing, it's hard to process one thing because in that one section, there's a billion things going on. Which is the same with Nemesis by Defecto. Not on the degree of the stage, but obviously the stage is unbelievably huge. But um, Defecto, there's a fair bit going on, as I said, and um, quite versatile, so it's a bit tricky to get into. Theory is easy to get into, easy to digest. Um, you don't have to use a lot of brain power. You can kind of sit back and relax and listen to theory, because it's just the big open sounds, and they're very pleasing to the ears. And uh, that's what you go to. It's just a very nice sound. But um, ranking it, um, as I said, um, it's easier to get into. Nemesis isn't. The vocals are grand and open and sound huge. In Defecto, it's not kind of like that. It's a bit more direct, but that's probably down to personal opinion. Um, the solos aren't as good as in Defecto. Our Journey, pretty boring. Um, sea of Damnation, the solo in that was just damn insulting. So, would it be better than Defecto? Because it's more open? Or is it worse because it's not um, as hard to get into? Is it better because the vocals are a lot more open and um, musical? Is it better because the songs are a lot more open and musical than Defecto? Or is Defecto better because there's a lot more going on? Is Defecto better because it's usually a bit more harsher? And is it... Is the facto better because the solos are a lot better. I ranked the facto an eight point five. Theory, I'm going to rank an eight point three. Now point three, I was never going to do. It's usually, you know, the eight or the seven or point five. But because I'm kind of comparing this with um, Defecto, and uh, there is a lot for theory, I do think it is above an 8. But it's not on the level of Defecto. So I can't go with a point five, and I didn't want to just give it an outright 8, so point three. It has things on Defecto that Defecto doesn't have, but Defecto has that more. The solos are brilliant. There is a lot there to listen to for an avid music fan. And that's what I am. I want to hear so many things. There's so many changes. Theory has its changes because it's so laid back and everything. It can be a bit slow at times if you want a bit of something to challenge yourself. Um, mentally, with further music, um, the solos aren't as good, as I said. And Seed Damnation, the solo sucks and the melodic sucks. So, um, 8.3. So... That is it. Now before I go, um, I'll just uh, remind people um, and tell you first out. Theory at the minute on Facebook are doing another album. So eventually another album by Theory is going to be out. Um, they've released videos um, showing some drumming and showing some guitar playing for what may be on the album. They um, have apparently been asking on Facebook uh, for people to say what they would like. So if you would like to um, write something to them to say what you'd like to hear in the next album, I'm guessing that they're actually taking that on board. Um, another thing um, in Defecto um, review, I said that Nicholas Sohn had another um, band which was called Malrun. M-A-L-R-U-N. And um, this was his first band, basically. 
Um, apparently they've took a bit of a hiatus there while he's done their defecto, which then Nicholas seems to be very proud of. He's the manager and everything. Um, he produced and everything, and he's obviously the guitarist in that. In Mal Run, I don't think he plays guitar again, which I find unbelievably weird because even though he's rhythm and defecto, he is like still one of the bloody best guitarists compared to so many um, guitarists there these days. So it's very weird. But um, yeah, Mal Run is also in the process of making another album. So if you haven't heard Mal Run, give it a listen. Um, off the bat, I'll just tell you that uh, Mal Run is um, the most aggressive. Um, they are definitely modern. They're not old school in the slightest, they are modern. It has the most screaming and aggression. And I'm not actually sure if they actually do solos. So um, there's that. Obviously with the next album, I don't know if they'll start doing solos. I don't know if they'll do less screaming and make it a bit more open because obviously um, there's been a fair few years and then Nicholas has um, improved a fair bit. So uh, we'll just have to see. But um, until they release an album, and again with theory, this is going to be it for um, you know Nicholas Soane's um, discography. Unless um, I listen to the first album by Defecto, I may review that. Um, this album, um, by theory, The Art of Evil, this is the only album they've uh, done, and the previous Mal Run albums, um, I didn't really like them, to be honest. Um, so I'm probably not going to review it, I'll uh, give uh, the next one a listen and probably review that. So, until uh, my next review, depending on uh, whatever that is, um, I'll see you guys later. If you like this video, please uh, leave a like. If uh, you didn't, you can leave a dislike. I'm perfectly open to that. Uh, you have every right to. I can't tell you not to. Free will and everything. But if you leave a dislike, I would appreciate it. If you leave a comment, to basically stating uh, what um, I can improve on and what you didn't like. So then hopefully I can uh, better myself and be more um, appealing to uh, what um, you're looking for. And obviously um, better myself because I would like more subscribers and stuff. But um, saying that, um, if you do like what I do and want to see more from me, I've got um, other videos out and other reviews. Um, I will keep, uh, still be doing reviews, so if you want to keep on top, please subscribe. Because that would mean a lot to me, and I would appreciate it. I do talk in the comments a lot, so if you have questions and want to talk music, I'm all for it. I love music, I love talking about it, so I'm very avid in the comments. So, um, that's basically it. Um, until next time, guys, see you later.